quick. What happened, madam? Never mind what happened. Get him out. The dirty clave devil is here. Now, wait yeah. a minute, man. Don't get excited. What's the number of your birth, lady? Ten. Number ten or lower. My ticket and car are on my bag. Well, you stay right where you are, ma'am. What's the matter, gentlemen? M must be some mistake. Well, if there's a mistake, we'll straighten it out. You come with me. Well, I, I didn't. I don't. I don't do nothing wrong. You make a mistake. All right, we'll find out. But I, I'm um. sure that you make a big mistake. I don't do nothing at all. I don't. Is this the man, lady? That's him. You Pullman car, Casanova. Yes, but I thought that. I know what you thought, and you can't get away with it. Maybe we ladies can't vote yet, but we got some rights, and privacy is one of them. Mr. Conductor, this woman's trying to make a scene. I'm trying to make a scene. How do you like that? Listen, Romeo, nobody sleeps in my berth but me. Mr. Conductor, like this. I meet this woman in the dining car during a dinner. We get to talking. She told me she had a lower berth. I told her I had an upper berth. Well, she said she couldn't sleep in a lower berth, so she asked me to make the change. <laughs> You ought to start that yarn off with once upon a time. Well, I'm a married man with two children. I... You're running true to form, brother. <laughs> but she told the father to make the change. Nobody told me to change nothing. Well, I thought it was all agreed. I was to have lower birth number 10. Ah, uh, we heard it. Now, let's throw them off. Yeah. Yeah. The gentleman is absolutely right. Who are you? Martin McNair of McNair and Norton, attorneys at law, St. Louis. I happen to be seated behind this pair in the dining car. I heard the lady offer to exchange birds. This is an old story. Our firm handles cases like this every day. Get a load of this, will you? Romeo even totes around his own mouthpiece. I've never exchanged words with a gentleman in my life. That's true. I've never seen this man before. Say, what is this? Open season on blondes? You men stick together like a pack of wolves. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the wise man who knows his own birth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to thank you for helping me last night. Oh, that's all right. I just hate to see a fellow taking over the jumps in a play like that, that's all. Pardon me, I didn't introduce myself. Angelo Colina. Huh? I know the name, huh? Who doesn't? Then you must be interested in oil, Mr. McNair. Well, law business is a little slow. Matter of fact, I'm on my way to Carson Town right now. Oh, I'm sorry I'm not stopping off there. I might be able to do something for you. Thanks. You know what? That was a very delicate situation you got me out of last night. The young lady had a pretty convincing story. The lady is always right, except when there's witnesses. That's just the reason I'd like to do something for her to show my appreciation. Well, if that's the way you feel, how about letting me near the ground floor of some of those lush Carson leases? <laughs> there are a lot of people like get a hold of some of those Carson leases. I'm just taking it your word. You said you wanted to do something for me, and that's it. Yeah, but that land is all cornered. Yeah, and you've got most of it. Eh, some, not much. How much of capital you got to invest? Oh, about 17,000 cash. 17,000, that's a little short. Well, maybe I could scrape up some more. Tell you what we'll do. I'll let you have four leases in the middle of Big Carson Field for $17,000. And not only doing this because you did me a good turn, but because I like the cut of your jib. It's a deal. What goes on? Just getting me some killing. This is an oil derrick, isn't it? Yeah, twice four years ago. You mean it's not an oil well? Twice four years ago. Good one? Yep. I remember the day she blew in. Shot up there a hundred feet. Oil? Nope. Salt water. Oh. These other holes, no oil? Nope. This is the big Carson field, isn't it? Yep. Big and dry. Come on, Annabella. Come on. Big and dry. McNair, Ace Grifter, 
taken by a mark for 17,000 bucks. <laughs> Canary swallows cat. What's so funny? You. You should see the bewildered look on your face. How did you know you've been taken? Is that funny? I don't know. Maybe it's hysteria. Maybe it's because I've just found out you're human. It was that slick Italian accent that got me, that's all. It took us two whole days to frame Kalina and convince him you were a right guy. And I was wrong. I know it. That's what tickles me. I've seen you trim suckers all the way from Spokane to New Orleans. And I've just found out you're a sucker yourself. All right, we'll get another steak. Listen, dude, I'm... I'm kind of fed up with leaving towns just one jump at the head of the Bunko squad. We gotta quit sometime before we run out of towns. Here we are, broke. Oh, we've been broke before. We'll get another steak. Yeah. To blow on some other sharpshooter's game. Oh, I told you we'd get another steak, didn't I? What's the matter with you? Are you slowing up? Nope. Just wondering how it feels to be legitimate. Oh, it's awful. Awful. I tried it. Wanna know something? Only suckers work for a living. You want me to let you in on a little secret? Huh. The suckers have all the fun. Watch your step, dude. Your father might be a farmer. Looks like you're in trouble. Can I help you? Well, yes, you move your car back. Maybe I can get through. Oh, uh, you go. I gotta get you back on the road first. Move over. I said, get out of the bus before you wreck it. We'll send a tow car out from town. And leave a lady in distress? Uh-uh. Oh. Well, if you want to play Sir Walter Raleigh, why don't you go up to that oil well you bought and bring down a plank to put under the wheels? That's a good idea. You, um, work in one of those dance halls in Carson Town? Well, hardly. Oh, I see. I know. You run the Woman's Exchange. My father runs a Carson Sentinel. He's owner, editor, and manager. Uh, well, remind me to speak to him about the bad roads, will you? You could have at least helped me. Look out for your feet. All right, turn that switch on. Get over there, get over there. When I say go, step on it. I'll see you in town. Not if I see you first. Roger Lane, killed old man Kirby. Who's Kirby? The fellow that ran the newspaper. Hey, you. 
Who's Rock Delaney? He runs in Derek's saloon. Dude, you come back here. I saw it. He staged an argument so he could murder Kirby. Well, then the man's my prisoner. Sure, so you can take him to a nice comfortable cell and feed him fried chicken and have a hung jury in a couple of weeks. Yeah, you're a friend of his. Everybody knows that. What are we waiting for? Let's get it over with. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, man. You can't do this. Oh, we can't, eh? If you feel like praying, Rock, you better go ahead. We're going through with this. It was an accident, I told you. I didn't mean to shoot the old buzzard. Oh. What right have you got to set yourself up as the law? Is there any man here who says he can dispense justice personally, set himself up as judge and jury? What are you butting in for? What's rock to you? Not a thing. For all I know, maybe he did commit the murder. But he says it was an accident. That makes it a case for the jury. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's one man dead already, and you want to even the score with another death. This time by out and out mob murder. Two wrongs don't make a right, gentlemen. That's simple arithmetic. We know what we're doing. What's your beef, mister? Did you lose some money at Delaney's place? I lost my future father-in-law, the only man in Sin Town who wouldn't stand for Delaney's guff. As I understand it, the dead man was a newspaper editor who was fighting for peace and security in this community. Tell me, would he have sanctioned lawlessness? Uh, would he have wanted this smear on the state's history? Gentlemen, believe me, the place for this is in the courts. Maybe we ought to wait, men. Let's put a stop to this by starting right. Yeah, and if we don't like the court's decision, we'll still go through with it. That's right. I don't want any killing on my hands. All right, gentlemen. Go to the Derrick. Drinks are on the house. <laughs> What a salesman. There's your man, Sheriff. Come on, Rock. You better go to jail with me. They might change their mind. Yeah, sure. My name's McNair. Wait a minute, dry hole. Where were you when that gang was dragging me down the street? Well, <clears throat> it happened so fast. Me and the boys were upstairs when we looked oh, out. Yeah, the you window. were upstairs. That's fine. Go on, play your hand and be careful. You gonna leave that jack of spades? Oh, no, no. Well, that's better. This ain't the right thing to do, Rock. People might think it's not the right way to treat a prisoner. Well, then you don't expect to eat that hash you dish out, do you? You better get wise to which side your job is buttered on, Sheriff. You're the boss, Rock. Hi, Sheriff. Did you send for me? Yeah, I guess you've heard who I am. Sure, Rock Delaney, you're on the Derrick. My name's McNair, Dude McNair. See you later, dry hole. It's better than being out there with a rope around your neck, isn't it? You bet. Say, that was quite a speech you made. No gun, no nothing, just talk. Mighty fancy wordslinging, mister. Well, I figure a mob's as strong as its leaders. Talk them out of it and the whole thing blows up. Well, it worked this time. Yeah, it seemed to be effective at that, didn't it? Yeah. Tell you, I want to do something for you to kind of even up the score. That's why I sent for you. I had a hunch you'd feel that way. I was on my way over here when I ran into your man. What brought you to this town, Mr. McNair? Oh, I thought I'd go in the saloon business. Yeah? No kidding. Where are you figuring on opening up? No place. I'm thinking of taking over the Derrick. The Derrick? That's my place. I wasn't figuring on selling out. I wasn't figuring on buying. You're going to make me a half partner. Maybe you and I better talk this over, Mr. McNair. Looks to me like you got this pretty well figured out. 
Yeah, sure. Take a look at that. You're gonna need me, Delaney. That's the Carson Town mouthpiece, and pretty soon people are gonna start believing it. Maybe you haven't heard. The man that runs this paper was buried today. Yeah, sure, but somebody else is taking it over, and they'll keep it running. Let me tell you something, Delaney. This is a rich town. More and more people are coming here every day. And with more and more people, are gonna come judges and honest courts and soldiers. I guess we can work something out. Sure, a 50% interest in the Derrick. I suppose you could run the place while I'm here in the lockup. Joe Venango, he's down there, kind of a straw boss. He could show you the ropes and take care of the money for you. I can keep in touch from over here. Wait a minute. I don't know about that rock. It might not look right. Oh, you ain't gonna get in no trouble. Go on there and clean out that cell. Why, yeah, sure. I guess it does need it at that. They really jump when you bark, don't they? They better. Well, I'll shake hands with your new partner. Yeah, and just to keep the record straight. Here's a little agreement I drew up. You, uh, don't trust people very much, do you? I'm just superstitious, that's all. All right. You'll take care of that newspaper? I'll take care of everything, Rock. There you are. Thanks. Take it easy, partner. What's the matter with you, Rock? You let that fellow talk you out of a half interest in the Derrick. Talk me out of it? That's why I sent for him, to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> what we need here is somebody like Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders. You're right. I'm afraid there's no sense fighting any longer. Delaney's just too strong for us. It's up to you, Laura. If you decide you want to leave Carson Town, I'll sell my well and... Sorry to hear about your father, Miss Kirby. Thank you. Uh, this is Wade Crowell, Mr. Uh... McNair, dude McNair. We've met. His fancy talk saved Delaney. So you're the brave hero who came to the rescue. Not exactly. I had to. You see, we're partners. You work for Delaney? Not for him with him. I'm gonna run the Derrick while he's in jail. My father tried to keep men like you and Delaney out of this town. That's why he was murdered. Miss Kirby, this is the hottest oil town in the West. Everybody's betting on a hole in the ground. When it comes in, they've got a right to have fun with their money, and I'm gonna give it to them. Give it to them? You mean take it from them? Look, you write your newspaper editorials. As far as entertainment's concerned, I'll take care of that. Laurie, you can't fight men like Delaney with words. Why don't you let me... Wait a minute, Wade. I'll write the editorials with front page headlines. We'll see how much entertainment you can get out of that. Come on, boys, we're going back to work. Let's go in. You can take this back to Rock Delaney. The Sentinel's going to press. Maybe we'll only get out one edition, but it's gonna be a good one. Sorry, fella, you just lost yourself a girl. Police in the place, huh? How many times have I told you to knock on the door before you come barging in? You're doing a swell job. As soon as you throw here, come over and give my bath a workout. They may get oil out of the ground here, but they certainly leave most of it on the tubs. We're out of the oil business, beautiful. What do you mean, we're out of the oil business? Take a look at that. Well, it's all set, huh? That's right. Rock and I are partners. From now on, it's 50-50 right down the line. From low to high without shifting. Look at you, sitting there with a the world in a jug. That's right. Didn't I tell you the fat of the land belonged to the smart money? Oh, you're in on this, too. I talked to Rock about that. And he said? What I say goes. We're going to dress you up in smart clothes. You'll knock the customers right off their chairs, and that's only the beginning, beautiful. If Rock can run this town, I can tie it up and put a string around it. That's swell. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing, dude. I'm with you all the way, only. Only, only what? Come on, spill it. Well, don't you think we put this deal over kind of easy? No, Rock was in a spot, that's all. I know it, dude, but this is no mark we're building up. This is a rough, tough guy, and I... 
Well, I'd hate to see you stick your neck out. Even a mud turtle sticks his neck out once in a while. That's the fun of it, to snap it back before somebody steps on it. Oh. So, everything's smooth sailing, huh? Just what the doctor ordered, and what's more, I like this town. And I like it, too. Providing it's only the town you're stuck on. What? Don't give me the big baby stare. You know what I mean. That Kirby girl. Kirby? Oh, you mean the kid in the car? Uh-huh. What are you, Joss? Who's got a better right to be? No, we've been partners for more than three years. No petticoat's gonna come in now and break it up. You mean that, dude? Have I ever lied to you? Mm, no, not about anything important, but... Listen, dude, let's make quick work of this job. Let's finish it up and get out of town before the bubble bursts in our face, huh? No, well, you stop worrying. Before we're through, we'll own every place in town and everybody in town will be working for us. Yeah, I've heard you say that before, too. I'm gonna hang on to my 3,000 bucks just in case. 3,000? Where'd you get it? Come on, come on, let me see it. Don't get excited. I'll get it. Where'd you get this? I've been putting it away for months. You know, $3,000 can get you out of town ahead of a car and feather party. Mm -hmm. You're not only beautiful, you're smart. How about one of those $3,000 kisses? All right, now get into your glad rags. Boys at the Derrick are waiting to meet our new boss. Give it to him both barrels. Big eyes and all? Yeah, pour it to him. Big eyes and all. Come on. Get organized. My name is Miss Allen. Mr. McNair's in his office. You. Do you think we'll do, Mr. McNair? We've worked in the best places on the coast. We know all the new and fancy dances. You do? Well, that'll brighten up this place, new and fancy dances. It's all right. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Mr. McNair. It's all right, it's all right. Sorry, dude. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, you're the soul of discretion, aren't you? What's on your mind? Well, this is a little private business. Come back later, girls. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Take a look at this, dude. Oh. Gamblers must go. Interesting, isn't it? Rock don't think so. Ruthless killing of Sentinel editor demands public action. Well, the kid packs a wall up, I'll say that for her. This brutal murder makes it the duty of every Carson Town citizen to see that justice is done. Corruption and crime stem from the same source, whether you call it Rock Delaney or Dude McNair. She could have used my name first. Carson Town citizens can expect much from the conviction of Delaney. While the accused murderer is in jail pending trial, his partner, a cheap opportunist, is carrying on where he left off. Our city in the hands of McNair will mean an even lower civil standard than before, if that is possible. Continued on page three. You want to hear the rest of it? Well, Looks like the turtle's gonna have his neck stepped on. How oh, are you, beautiful? What you gonna do about this, dude? Do? Yeah. Rock said you promised to take care of that end of the bargain. I told Rock, and I'm telling you, that Kirby gal's nosy. I don't like your nervous attitude, my friend. What do I tell Rock? Nothing. I told him I'd take care of the newspaper, and I will in my own way. Now, I want the owner of every place in town here immediately. Oh, but suppose... Go get him. Yes, sir. And one thing more. From now on, I'll do the reading for this partnership. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right, go on. Well, Mr. Big, how are you going to con your way out of this one? As long as the man's on the level, he's got nothing to worry about, beautiful. Now, Mr. McNair? No. As long as the man's on the level, he's got nothing to worry about, beautiful. Who says I gotta be over to the Derrick tonight when I close? Dude McNair. And he's Rock Delaney's partner, if that means anything to you. I'll be there. Dude McNair wants you to be over the Derrick tonight as soon as you close up. What's going on? Just be there.
Tell Duden McNear I'll be down to Derrick tomorrow morning, and not before. He wants you there tonight, and he don't mean tomorrow. You go back and tell Dude McNair, Kentucky Jones don't take orders from anybody. Suit yourself, but you better be there with the others. Gentlemen, there are two elements in a town like this, ours and the Law and Order Gang, and the other side is getting stronger all the time. Now, we've got a good thing here, but it's only good if we can control it. You saw what happened to Rock. Well, the next time the mob gets riled up, they won't be so easy to stop. You got any ideas? Yeah. We're going to organize and operate legitimately. Square tables, uncut liquor. The percentage is so great that nobody can squawk. You don't know this town, mister. I know a lot of other towns just like it. We've got the power of organization behind us. And we're going to stand behind each other and pay off on every squawk that comes up. But that'll cost a lot of money, won't it? Yeah, I was just going to tell you gentlemen about that. There'll be dues and assessments, of course. Who are we supposed to kick into? You're going to kick into me. Me and Rock. We'll take care of all disputes, and of course, we'll dispense protection. It strikes me you're running things with a mighty strong hand for a gent who just broke into town. I didn't catch your name, mister. Kentucky Jones. I run a little place here, and I don't need any help. Everybody needs help. Now, get this. We're banding together for mutual protection. If there's any protection to do, I'll handle it myself. I doubt that, mister. There's always two sides to an argument. Now, come on. You're either with us or against us. Come on, come on. Make up your mind. We want to get on with the meeting. Anybody else like to join the gentleman from Kentucky? Well, that'll be all for tonight, gentlemen. One of my boys will drop in to see and set the fee for our services. Just a minute. What are we going to do about Kentucky? He swings a lot of lead in this town. Don't worry about that. There are lots of ways of taking care of fellows like Kentucky. They keeps around here, don't they? Yeah, I guess they do. So long as we're in the driver's seat, we might as well find out where we're going, don't you think? There's a rumor around town that Kentucky's place had an accident this morning. Yeah. It says here the place was damaged somewhat. Now that just goes to show you can't believe everything you read. Kentucky's place wasn't somewhat damaged, it was wrecked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I see Mr. Delaney? Hey, Rock. Come in, come in, by all means. I thought you might have special visiting hours. Oh, not at all, any hour of the day. You just declare yourself in. Sit down, please. Dry hold, you and the sheriff take a walk. I hope I'm not interrupting your lordship. My dear lady, you couldn't possibly interrupt me. From what I've heard, I imagine you're Kai Allen, right? That's pretty good imagining. Some coffee? Thanks, black. Light? Thank you. Pretty nice setup you've got here. All the comforts of home, huh? Oh, it's sort of... Keeps me out of the crowds. It serves as a swell alibi. Alibi? Yeah. For instance, nobody in the world would dream that you and your men blew up Kentucky's place. Except me. Oh, that. <laughs> I was just reading about that in the papers. Strictly between us, don't you think dude's going a little bit too strong? Now, look, Mr. Delaney. Let's not you and me kid each other. Dude never strong-armed anybody in his life. He's strictly a con man. He'll match his wits against the larceny in everybody's soul. But if he can't talk his way out of it, you win. Well, that's good, good. I was hoping all the time he didn't have a hand in that. You're uh, all right, Rock. I guess I don't know why you're top man around these parts. I don't think it would take you long to become top woman. Do you always get what you want? That depends upon who has it to begin with. How long have you and Dude been together? Together? I've been his business partner for three years, if that's what you mean. Not that I wouldn't make it permanent if he just raises a little finger. 
And so far, he hasn't. No, but he will, though. And if he don't, why, I'm three years ahead of most of the gals. The dude sends you down here to register a complaint. Dude, don't complain, Mr. Delaney. And he didn't send me down here. I just don't like to see him taking the rap for somebody else. Strictly business, huh? Yeah. I never mix business with pleasure. Well, I'm just the other way. I always try to get a little pleasure with business. By the way, since Dude and I are half-partners, don't you think that maybe you and I could sort of... Is that a proposal, Mr. Delaney? I'm the kind of a man you could do great things with. Haven't you heard? Never end a sentence with a proposition. You think a lot of Dude, don't you, Miss Allen? I think enough of him not to stand around and see him get hurt. Oh, is he in danger? Maybe. If the long-suffering citizens start running around with a rope again. <laughs> you have it pretty well figured out, don't you? Yeah, and I think you have, too. Mobs cool out awful quick after one hanging. The next time, they mean business, and they can't hurt you because you're in jail waiting for trial. <laughs> well, then maybe you better get busy. I understand that the Sentinel has called a meeting of the irate citizens for tonight. I am busy right now, Mr. Delaney. Telling you to be careful. Dude can handle any meeting of irate citizens called by a newspaper. I hope so. Thanks for the coffee. You're welcome, I'm sure. Speedy's called order, folks. Wait, Crowell's gonna make a speech. Go ahead, wait. I'm not much on talking, but there's one man in this town who is. And that's the man we're here to talk about. His name's Dude McNair. He's talked this town right into his hip pocket. Maybe you people didn't know it, but McNair's the new customs collector. You want to run a business in this town, you pay him. If you want to evade the law, you pay him. You can only live in this town by the personal permission of Mr. Dude McNair. You've got all of that now, haven't you? Sure, sure. You say his name is Mason. Mason or any other name will do. Now go on over there and don't miss. You all know what happened in my place. That's the way they fight. And when they throw dynamite, you can't fight them back with words. Hey. I have a little plan I'd like to tell you about. May I? <laughs> I've got good news. Mason's wildcat just blew in. She's going over the crown. Looks like 10,000 barrels. That's right next to mine. Oh, come on, let's go. Proves one thing, Dude McNair was afraid of that meeting or he wouldn't have broken it up with a false alarm. Do you think he did it? I bet my well against a pack of cigarettes. Well, Dad used to say, when a man is afraid of his enemy, he's sure of defeat. Well, your dad was right. What happened tonight won't stop us. Oh, now, don't you worry about that. You get a good night's sleep and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, dear. Good night. kind of abruptly tonight, didn't it? You wouldn't by any chance have engineered that, would you? Oh, no. Listen, why don't you stop trying to reform this town? You can't save a rotten building by whitewashing it. Please. This town's a lot tougher than a Sunday school picnic. And how would you know that? Oh, I know a lot about Sunday school picnics. Ants on the chocolate cake and jelly sandwiches and sack races. Your left foot and your partner's right foot in a sack. I remember my first picnic, the gal I picked... You're wasting a lot of charm, Mr. McNair. As I was saying, the gal I picked was a beauty. We used to fall down, she'd cry and blame me for losing the race. Very interesting. Now, if you... You remind me a lot of that girl. We never could get along until one day we went for a canoe ride. Oh, it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining. Well, the canoe started to tip, and she screamed, and I reached forward to save her. And well, before you knew it, we were in each other's arms, kissing. I'm sure you're irresistible to women, Mr. McNair. 
But I'm engaged to Wade Crowell. I know all about that. The girl I'm talking about was engaged to the local organist. And she lived happily ever after. No, that's the funny now, part please, of it. Now, please, I'm really very tired, and I must be at the office early in the morning. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Tomorrow is a Tar and Feathers editorial, isn't it? I had something else in mind, but Tar and Feathers sounds kind of good. Miss Kirby, you're battling... I'm battling against the conditions to kill my father. Rob Delaney, you, the Derrick Saloon. Those are only the reflections of an oil town. Now, how can you talk about gambling when this whole town's a gamble? A gamble against a couple of holes in the ground. That's why the percentage is so great when one of them comes in. The Sunday school picnics and all of that will come later. But right now, everybody in town's so dizzy, they can't listen. You saw them tonight, didn't you? Yes, I saw them. Then you know what you're up against, don't you? How would you like to go for a little canoe ride? Canoe ride? Yeah, yeah, before you marry the organist. I've never heard him called anything else but do. Do? That's the gentleman I'm looking for. Judge, you old rascal. Come, my darling, you look beautiful. What are you doing in town? Well, through the grapevine and various other channels, I have received information that one M. Bromley McNair has a considerable interest in an emporium of wine, women, and song. <laughs> Said he needed me, and here I am. You don't know how good it is to see you, old rascal. And you'll get along all right here. The sheriff's on our side. Well, good, good. And what have you been doing to improve the shiny eyes? Oh, trying to keep the oil spots off my knees. A waste of talent, my dear, a waste of talent. <coughs> oh, what's the touch? All right, my dear, I say, what's the touch? What is it that requires my particular talent? I don't know. Oh, uh, Doodle explain. He's in the office. Come on. Oh, but, uh, aren't you in on this? Sure, sure, but I want to give you and Doodle a chance to finish the You Remember When. Oh, mighty thoughty of you, Kai, mighty thoughty. You go right in that office there and give Doodle the surprise of his life. Well, dude, my boy, how are you? Well, you, hey, you're losing weight. Forty pounds in six weeks. What, are you on a diet? No oh, trouble with the shorts. Oh, yeah, sit down, sit down. Tell me all about it. Where have you been? What have you been up to? Well, I was working on a mark in a little town in East Texas. A nice little guy, a florist. A kind of a mark. I figured it'd cool off in a few days, but he let a scream out of him. You could hear it spoke in. Yeah, those florists make a lot of noise, don't they? And not only cost me the 2200 I got off the mark, but it cost me all the cash I had besides. How about a drink? No, never touch it before 11. Hmm, five after. <coughs> Homie? Come on, there it is. Come on, there it is. Number seven at Saloon, sir. Uh, well, that's it. Come on, I still got enough left to buy a drink. Oh, you go ahead. I'll see you later. Some days you just can't lay up a cent. That's what they say. Next time, send your money in and save yourself a trip. Maybe a good idea. How much did you lose? Sixty-eight bucks. I know it doesn't sound like much unless it's all you've got. So you said to yourself, I might as well be broke as to have 68 bucks, so you tried to run it into a bankroll, huh? How did you know? Come on over and sit down, and I'll tell you. What are you trying to do? Pull off a loser? Maybe. Carry on, carry on, dude. It's very interesting. So I saw the boss of cars in town, pulled the chestnuts out of the fire for him from that day forward 50-50. Ah, uh, dude, my boy, I'm proud of you. But just what type of a Michaelian role do you have set aside for me to portray? From now on, you're in the newspaper business. Newspaper business? Why, dude, you know that journalism wasn't one of my many studies. It is now. Listen, the Carson Town Sentinel's on the rocks. I want to buy in without the owner knowing I'm putting up the dough. Uh, I see. An attempt to control the political attitude of this fair hamlet. That's just about it. Here's the setup, Chubby. Judge. All right, here's the setup, Judge. You're going to buy a 50% interest. Nobody's to know I'm behind it now. Remember that. 3,000 simoleons. 
But where do I find this gentleman of the fourth estate? You'll find the office right down the street. And also, while you're there, you will find a Miss Kirby. A Miss Kirby is young and beautiful. I can see that this might develop into a very interesting association. You take care of the business, and I'll take care of the extracurricular activities. Oh, but, dude, I was only... Only uh, nothing. Now, come on, Horace Greeley. Go west. Go west. All right, dude, my boy, all right. But first, I would like to exchange a bit of repartee with our old friend and associate, Miss Kai. She'll take up too much of your time. Now, come on, uh, this way, this way. <clears throat> all right. Mm, the servant sentence. Yeah. It's been a lovely visit. Good yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good day. It's not a question of guesswork anymore. With any kind of luck, we're a day's drilling away from a fortune. Well, what's holding you up? Can't drill without casing. You've got a pretty good name around town. Won't any of these buzzards extend you a little credit? I'm afraid, Miss Allen, that buzzards do a cash and carry business. How much do you think it'll take? About 2,000 or maybe 2,500. I, um, might be able to dig it up for you. Why should you want to help me? Now, what's the matter? Can't a girl want to do something without having an ankle? You're in a fix. I want to give you a lift. I'm the stubborn type. Why? OK, you're right. I have an ankle. I was just reaching for a life preserver. Brother Wade, my ship is going down. We're both in the same boat, eh? Yeah, that's about right. You want your oil well to come in because you want to play Prince Charming to Miss Kirby. I want your oil well to come in because if it don't, my Prince Charming will beat you to it. I don't think that Laura Yeah, would... but dude would. Is that deal on? But suppose I'm mistaken. Suppose there is no oil. Well, if there is no oil, there is no dude. So what's it matter? Well, there's the principle of the thing. Oh, please, no. I couldn't stand a sweetness and light routine. If you hit oil, just consider it's a business proposition. Figure that you sold me some shares. Is it a deal? Miss Allen? Kai? Dude McNair's got the right girl and doesn't know it. Yeah, that's the trouble. He doesn't know us. Excuse me, I'll be back. Hello, beautiful. Hello. Looks like old times having the judge around. Oh, where is he? He just stepped out. He'll be right back. I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing him. What you gonna cut him in on? Oh, there's plenty of angles in a town like this. Dude. Yeah? You, um, uh, remember that boy, Wade Crowell? Crowell? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a regular go-getter. I've been talking to him outside. He's got an oil well he sold on, only he needs capital. I thought maybe we could help him out. I'd kind of like to loan him that holdout money we've been keeping. You're not going to fall for that line, are you? Everybody around here talks, eats, and sleeps about the gushers they're going to bring in. I've had 20 propositions. We can't play Santa Claus to every guy with a dream. Oh, and uh, about that holdout money of ours. Yes. You were saying about that holdout money of ours. I gave it to the judge. We got a little deal on. Look, dude. Up to now, we played everything straight. Let's not start hedging on each other. All right. He's going to buy the cent north. It's a nice was little paper. Was your idea or his? It was mine. The paper's going broke. Why I... didn't you buy it yourself? I figured she wouldn't take the money from me. And you wanted to be sure she didn't leave town. Until I proved I wasn't such a wrong guy, that's all. Uh -huh. Kai, you know all those times you talked about finding a little town, settling down, quitting the racket? Yeah. Well, I know what you're talking about now. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. Came to me out of the blue. I saw her after the meeting the other night. Yeah, I saw you on the porch. Oh, you did. Then you understand, don't you, Kai? Yeah, dude. I understand. Anybody home? Anybody home? Noisy and smelly, but practical. Miss Kirby? Yes? Vale is my name, Eustace Vale. In the jovial camaraderie of the newspaper world, they call me the judge. Yes? Now, having been a metropolitan newspaper man for a good number of years, I have a desire to settle down. And why not, as part owner in a palladium of public opinion in a thriving, bustling young community like this? 
That's all of that, Mr. Vale. I'm a man of few words, Miss Kirby. I have a desire to buy half interest in the Sentinel. That is, if you would entertain such a proposition, or am I presuming? You're not presuming, not at all. Just how much were you thinking of investing, Judge? Well, now, let's see. After considerable thought, I was wondering if, uh, if <coughs> $2,500 would be of any interest. Hi, I... <coughs> Start the presses. Two. Start the presses, please. Four. Start the presses. <laughs> This is the well I'm talking about, right here. Yeah, and who owned this choice bit of wildcat? Ah, oh, hot-headed young fool by the name of Wade Crowell. You know, Rock, in a way, I'm surprised at you. You pay my freight all the way down here so I can buy into a well for you, a well that might never come in. And I'm a little surprised at you, my friend. You should know better than to think that I would invest any dough in anything that isn't a sure bet. Why don't we stop sparring around? Listen, I got a man working on this well with young Crowell. Slim Hollister, he's a pusher. And one of my very best men, too. Well, that sounds more like you. Hollister tells me this thing's about ready to blow. Then why send for me? Why not put up the cash and buy in? Well, he won't sell to me. See, the kid and I had a little bit of trouble. His, uh, his intended father-in-law was shot and... Accidentally, of course. Of course. But he thought I did the job. And before I had a chance to explain, he was down there with a mob and had a rope around my neck. So, naturally, the boy is a little bit touchy about making me a partner. Naturally. Well, that's where you come in. He needs the cash to keep on drilling. I got the cash, and I want you to invest it for me. That's all there is to it. And then? We stop work on the well. I see. Listen, Rock. You and I have done business for a long time. But I won't raise a finger in this job as long as you're holding out on me. Holding out on you? Why, certainly. I'm not a kid in short pants. You say the well is a sure bet, and then you tell me you want to stop work as soon as you control it. Now, come clean. Come in here. Sit down. All those leases around that boy's well belong to me. Or they will belong to me in a day or two. When that gusher comes in, all that land is going to be worth a fortune. Oh, just like ABC, huh? Right now, those leases belong to eight oil men. I got control of them by lending money to those men. Some of them gave me options when they couldn't pay off their gambling debts down my place. Neatly done, my friend. <laughs> and day after tomorrow, if they can't pay off, I own the land. Yeah, but what if Crowell brings in that well? Well, if he does, all those leaseholders can get credit anywhere. Any bank in the state will extend credit on that land when there's a gusher right in the middle of it. Yeah, which leaves you holding a very big and empty bag, eh? That's why I sent for you. I want you to get down to that well, size it up, talk to Hollister, and then make the boy an offer. At the usual percentage, of course. I see what you mean. Enter Angelo Colino, always ready to make an honest penny, eh? From now on, your troubles are over. <laughs> That's the idea, Angie, old boy. That's the idea. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Hi there, Laura. Go right ahead. Don't stop drilling on my account. I wish I could. You're just in time to see the finish of Wade Crowell number one. And what are you going to do about it? What can I do about it? We're out of casing. We're out of fuel to the boiler. The men haven't been paid. You can take my $2,500 and buy fuel, pay salaries and establish credit for more casing. You can do... Now, we've been all through that, Laura. What if something happened? Now, look here, Wade Crowell. You believe there's oil down there, don't you? Sure I do, only I'm... Only nothing. After the well comes in, $2,500 will only be a drop in the bucket, won't it? Well, what about the paper? Well, everybody knows Judge Vale bought a partnership in it, so I can run on credit for a month at least. Laura, I can't do it. How can you be so stubborn? I'm not stubborn, only I won't let you... I'm sorry. Wade, the well means a lot. Without it, you can't do the things you want to do, can you? Why don't you think of me? Am I supposed to hang around until I'm an old maid? You mean that, that if the well comes I in... I mean you're... we'd better be getting back to town and arrange for more casing. Woo! Come on! Slim, hold everything! We're back in business!
sorry, mister, but I'm busy. But my boy, you must realize, if you want to close them up this deal, it's a matter of time with me. I'll only be in town a couple of hours. You have an attractive proposition, but I'm not interested, stranger. <laughs> stranger? <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm Angelo Colino, a friend of all humanity. Then I appreciate your friendship. Now listen, my boy. You know the oil business, I know financing. Together we'll make the greatest combination in this business. Hello, huh? kid. How's your oil business been treating you? Uh, you and your partner, Rock Delaney, ought to know. Don't I recognize you from someplace? <laughs> yes, I... I got one of those kind of faces that fit in the crowd. <laughs> sure, Colin meets a lot of people in saloons, on boats, even on trains. Yes, I ran into a man once... I and remember, now I met you on a train, didn't I? You did? Yeah, you're Colino, aren't you? Yes, Angelo Colino. Oh, of course, I remember. McNair, Duda McNair, huh? That's right, yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry about it. Oh, that. forget about those leases. It's liable to happen to anybody. That's life. What about you, Carl? You got a new bankroll? Yeah, and it isn't blood money. Well, don't let me interrupt you, gentlemen. Go right ahead with your business. Nice to have seen you. Just to think, I almost missed running into you again. Yeah, just to think. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you, Carlina. Yes. Goodbye. Well, so long. Uh, well, Mr. Carl, wait a minute. Don't go away. I want to I wanna talk to you. You see, I've come a long way to buying this oil well of yours. They don't seem fair to turn me down without some consideration. I'm sorry, mister, but that well's my baby. And it's got to stay in the family. That was Mr. Crowell. I... So you're really going, huh? What'd you expect me to do? Stick around and be housekeeper? No, only I thought maybe you'd... Look, Doug, you know how it is with a rubber band. You stretch it and stretch it and it always snaps back. But each stretch kind of weakens it and finally there isn't any snap left. I didn't want to start this whole thing over again, but... No? Well, Kalina's in town. Kalina? Oh, you mean the guy on the train? That's right, the one who got our 17,000. I wouldn't worry. Rock will protect you. I don't need any protection. I just want to get even. Where are those oil leases he sold us? Well, I wouldn't get mixed up in anything like that if I were you. Why not? Don't you remember? You're going legitimate. Sheriff, how about a little game of pitch? No, thanks. I'm cured. <laughs> Rock, I got some bad news. That Crowell kid got a new bankroll. A new bankroll? Well, where'd he get it? I don't know. Well, what about that false alarm Kalina? I spoke to him at the hotel. He said the Crowell kid won't sell. Oh, that's fine. Well, if he won't sell to Kalina, he won't sell to nobody. Time's getting short, Rock, and you can't do business with Crowell. Well, making business deals ain't my specialty anyhow. In your position, Rock, you better be careful. In my position in here, I'm safe. In Dude's position, you gotta be careful. You see, Sheriff, position is everything in life. Look, Dryhole, I want you to fix that well for me. Fix it so it won't come in. That is, not until we're ready to let it come in, understand? Sure, I'm a champion little fixer. Well, that's well. Go start fixing it right now. I'd like to talk to you. Our society page said you were leaving town, Miss Allen. Now, don't worry. I won't let you paper down. I've still got 30 minutes before train time, and I want to discuss something with you. All right, go right ahead. I can't figure it out. No? No. I've seen him play around before. There was a blonde from Kansas City and a redhead from St. Joe that I remember. But he only gave them a whirl, and then came running right straight home to Mama. You know, sort of like the kid that got caught stealing jam. Only this time, it's... What on earth are you talking about? Now, don't give me that, or I'm liable to forget I'm a lady. Please do. Maybe we'll get along better. I'm talking about do. I thought so. I still can't figure it out. How a mousy little thing like you hopes to take care of a guy like do. I have no desire to take care of him. But you were doing pretty good on the porch the other night. Oh, you saw that. Yeah. Well, Mr. McNary's a very persuasive gentleman. 
What was it this time? The one about the canoe ride? You've heard that one. Yeah. I was the little girl on the Sunday school picnic. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Miss Allen, your worries are over. I'm going to marry Wade Crowell. That's what you think. Why do you say that? Dude's got other ideas. Then he'll have to change them. Miss Allen, I'm sure life with Dude must occasionally be very thrilling. But I'll take Wade and not worry about the blonde in Kansas City or the redhead in St. Joe. Sister, you're... You're all right. I take back the mousy crack. Says we're through. Cut off the engine. I'll get the shell. Come on, get out of here. Give me that shell. Keep the motor running and be ready to go fast. Right. Take it easy with that thing. Crowell's well. Was Wade hurt? I don't know how bad. They slugged him when they planted the charge. Well, why didn't you bring him in town? I tried to. He wouldn't leave the well. Come on, Laura. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. That gives you an idea what's going on around this town. The McNair-Delaney combination blew up that well to stop it from coming in. So they could grab your leases and squeeze you out. Are you going to wait from the dynamite the whole town? No, no, no. Start at the jail with Rock and finish up with his partner at the dairy. But after you, Rock, and this time we mean business. They ain't after me, they're after Dude McNair. They want Dude McNair, they want you, and they might want me, and I ain't taking no chances. Close the tables, boys. That's all for today. There's trouble coming. All right, everybody, drink up and get out. Come on, the bar's closed.
it, dude. What's the matter, Rocky? Got your wind up? Drop that stuff and get over here where I can watch you. I might as well tell you the citizens are out to finish the job they started. On you, not me. Why do you think I gave you this place? I'll just take the cash and them leases. You can explain to the citizens. What leases, Rock? For a smart talker, you ain't so smart, are you? Let me tell you something. By tomorrow, I'll own all the best land around Wade's Well. I got an option on every rig for a mile in each direction. Tomorrow, those options come due in my favor. You're running out, aren't you, Rock? I'm surprised at you. I had you figured as the kind of a fellow that would face a mob head on, or maybe throw some dynamite like you did at Kentucky's place. <laughs> That's something else you can explain to the citizens. And while I'm explaining, what are you going to be doing? I got a car outside. I'm going to pick up a gal by the name of Kai Allen, an old friend of yours. I'll be busy convincing her that my money speaks louder than your fast talk. <laughs> Stand up, Rock. Rock Delaney. But that fellow is still his partner. Hey. Rock, 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 Rock. Rock was fooling him, too. I heard it. He was a bigger chump than any of us. Maybe he was, and maybe he wasn't. We still don't want him in Carson Town. You heard that, mister. You and this town will both be a lot healthier with you gone. Now get out. Thanks, Kentucky. Take it easy, boys. Wait! Wait! I'm all right, Laura. But it looks like the end of foul number one. Oh, well, don't worry about it.
may sound fantastic, Mr. Carter, but after all, these things always do. This map is going to lead us to the biggest hidden gold mine in the state of Mississippi. Gold? In Mississippi? What's wrong with Mississippi? Is there a law against having gold there? After all, you've got, well, Memphis, pineapples, the biggest river in America. Why can't you have gold in Mississippi? All the gold in Mississippi, my friend, is in the banks. And I don't need your map to show me where they are. Yeah. That sounds like a very interesting proposition. Where did you say that hidden gold mine was? Forget it. I made it up last night. It's a map of Central Park. Oh, that's too bad. I have 17,000 bucks that's just begging to be invested. 17,000? Yeah. I made the judge sell those leases back to Kalina. For only 17,000? Well, it should have been 20, but the judge took a little brokerage commission. Oh, that's right. I forgot all about the judge and his commission. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you doing on this train? Where are you going? Where are you going? You're an awful sucker, beautiful. Don't you remember? I told you the suckers had all the fun. Dude? 